players who have played four years here and are part of the most winning class in the history of Swarthmore men's basketball. Number 12, Brandon Patton, a 6'1 guard out of South River, New Jersey. Number 22, Shane Leffler, a senior 5'11 guard out of West Grove, Pennsylvania. And number 53, Sean Thaxter, a 6'5 senior forward out of Coble Skill, New York. Thaxter has taken an additional and increased role this season, starting the second half of the year after a Chris Bourne injury sidelined him for the rest of the year. Shane Leffler has been a dependable guard off the bench, a guy to spare minutes for Matt Brennan, as well as to provide a second point guard on the floor when Brennan is on and has been a great ambassador for this program. Brandon Patton, a guy that pushes the guys every single day in practice, plays uh, minutes here and there on the floor, and has really understood, absorbed, and embraced his role with this team. Those three players about to be honored, along with their parents at midcourt, as the Swarthmore Garnet now take to the bench. They will have the senior day ceremony and festivities, a few more minutes of warm up, and then first tip between the 18 and six Garnet of Swarthmore and the four and 20 Fords of Haverford College. Shane Leffler, senior guard, honored. Brandon Patton now introduced. The final honoree, Sean Thaxter.
Senior Day festivities here at Tarbo Pavilion on the campus of Swarthmore College. Sean Thaxter, Shane Leffler, Brandon Patton honored for their four years of service. And the growth of this program in this past year especially, they now find themselves the most winningest class in the history of Swarthmore men's basketball. We'll take a quick break, come back for tip-off, and you are watching the Swarthmore men's basketball program coverage on the Garnet Sports Network.
And welcome back to Tarbell Pavilion as we get ready for tip-off here in the final Saturday of the regular season in the Centennial Conference. The 18-6 Swarthmore College Garnet against the 4-20 Haverford College Fords. Haverford 2-15 in the Centennial Conference. Swarthmore 12-5 for the time being in sole possession of second place, trailing only Franklin and Marshall at 15-2, who has already locked up home court advantage in the Centennial Conference Tournament. However, Swarthmore not locked into that position. Still hot in pursuit. Both the three seed Dickinson and the four seed Gettysburg. Gettysburg has one less game played. It was a rescheduled game at Ursinus that will be replayed on Monday. Gettysburg at 10 and six needs to win two to have an opportunity to be the two seed. Swarthmore would need to lose in that respect as well in order to give Gettysburg that opportunity. Dickinson can, can clinch the two seed with a win today and then a loss by Swarthmore and one loss from Gettysburg. So the stage is set for the Garnet win and they are in. Win and they are the two seed. And they'll head out to Lancaster, Pennsylvania as will the rest of the four teams for the Centennial Conference Tournament. Four versus five, however, will be a play-in. So Gettysburg at 10 and six wants to move into the three seed to avoid that one game playoff against likely McDaniel, but Johns Hopkins still has an opportunity. McDaniel clinched a berth in that play-in game. Cannot be knocked out of the playoffs, but Hopkins could jump Gettysburg with two wins and two bullets lost. Starting lineups for Haverford College, Henry Stevens, senior guard out of the Bronx, New York. Kyle Goldfarb, 6'2 freshman from New York, New York. Sam Stogden, a freshman forward at 6'6 out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Khalil Garn, 6'2 freshman guard out of Livingston, New Jersey. And Joe Scabelli, freshman forward out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Starters for the Garnet, they will start all three seniors, Brandon Patton, Shane Leffler, Sean Thaxter. And then also starters, Zach Yonda, Robbie Walsh. Two seed in the Centennial Conference on the line in the final Saturday of regular season action. Stogden against Walsh. Tip is won by Walsh and we're underway. Walsh has it, top of the key. Inside they go, double team comes. Stogden will be called for the foul on the reach. Matt Sherman, the leading scorer for the Fords this year has been fighting injury. Unsure if we'll see him in the game tonight or not. Played limited minutes before in the last game and Robbie Walsh leads off the scoring for the Garnet. Good lob pass in. Catch and fire. Goldfarb, top of the key now, Scabelli. Garns, double team comes on him. They work it back up top to Goldfarb. Scabelli thought about the three. Into the lane he goes, picked pocketed. Patton. Now Thaxter, top of the key. Off for Yonda, right wing. Patton off a screen. Three is no good, and the rebound down to Henry Stevens. Stevens, that left arm wrapped up. Three comes from Scabelli, back iron, no good. And now Yonda, after the first touch off for Leffler. Nineteen to shoot for the Garnet, Patton. 14 to shoot for the Garnet. Some off ball movement here from Thaxter. Patton now inside to Walsh. Double team comes on him, one dribble. Extra pass for Thaxter. Baseline, no good late in the shot clock, but he gets his own rebound. And they'll reset the offense. Patton. Here's Yonda. Thaxter has it. 
Here comes Yonda off the screen. Can't hit it. And the rebound down to Joe Scabelli. This is Garnes. Garnes guarded by Patton launches. No good. Down to the floor. And another body on the floor. Thaxter went down. Looked like he tucked down Scabelli inadvertently on the way there. Kind of a sleepy start to this one. 2 nothing Garnet. Patton has it near the baseline off for Walsh. They look like they want a double Walsh every time he catches the ball. Skip pass, barely got there. Now Thaxter can't hit. Patton with the rebound. Shot clock did reset, should it have, I'm not sure. And now the steal comes from Stevens right back to Leffler. Got his hands right in now. Thaxter off for Walsh. Off the glass and good. Garbage in the gold for the Garnet. It's 4 0. Now Haverford holds. Garnes will launch the three. It'll go. 4 3, the Garnet lead. 16 50 to go, first half. Patton right wing to Thaxter. All three seniors starting, winning his class in Swarthmore basketball history. Yonda goes to the hoop and is blocked. Here's Henry Stevens, eyes up floor, finds Garnes. Backs it back up. Swarthmore in the man-to-man -man defense. Sam Stogden off for Garnes, launches the three, in and out. Leffler, not a ton of numbers. Gets it inside to Walsh. Here comes Garnes the other way. Through the lane and gets hammered by Sean Thaxter. Walsh was not ready for that pass on the prior possession. Hit him right in the gut and popped back out. Led to the steal. Khalil Garnes, 82% free throw shooter this year, knocks down the first. Garnes averaging 12 points a game, second leading scorer, only behind Matt Sher Sherman, the guy that we may not see much of today, if at all. He's played very limited minutes in the last few games coming off injury. Garnes hits both, Haverford with a one point lead. Kim Wiley into the game for Swarthmore. A freshman who's seen limited playing time, but they have high hopes for. Liebrich into the game along with Kosano. Wilmot and Brennan complete the full substitution. Kosano for three, back iron no good. The one hop comes all the way to number 31, Khalil Garnes. Garnes now head fake comes baseline. Stevens, extra pass to Goldfarb, nearly loses it and he'll reset. Inside to Josh Freed. Freed goes baseline. Good head fake. Off the glass and good. A nice move from Joe Scabelli. Freshman forward. Knocks down the two. Now Wiley backs it up. Brennan off the screen. Will be good from there. Long two for Matt Brennan. It's 7-6 Haverford. Offense running through Garnes, a little short on that one. Here comes Wiley. Brennan had a step. Instead off for Kosano. Back iron, no good. Choppy game so far. Neither team shooting particularly well. Three of nine for Swarthmore, two of seven for Haverford to start off. Goldfarb goes back to Scabelli. Goldfarb on the baseline, a little short. Wasn't following his own shot. Brennan with the board. Brennan with an immediate halt, now Kosano. Kosano thought about the three. Instead, Liebrich will launch. Back iron no good. Kosano got a piece. 
and it'll go back to Haverford. Might have touched Kyle Goldfarb on the way out. But the referee saw differently, and the Fords will start with the basketball. 14.06 to play, a low-scoring affair. 7-6, the Fords lead. Rohan Shukla. Looked like he wanted to check in. The coaches wanted him in, but he'll take a quick seat. And now up the floor, Matt Sherman. Sherman, the leading scorer for this team, into the game, not starting because of recent injury, but well enough to play. Freed, spins, can't hit, thought he was fouled, but the follow is good. Walt Plumley. Wiley to the bucket, cannot get it to go, rims out. Two free throws going for the freshman. Wiley just four of six from the free throw line this season. Good end over end spin. Nine to seven, Haverford now leads. Aces the pair, and Cam Wiley will come out of the game. Replaced by Zach Yonda, the sophomore. Haverford leads by one, 13.30 to play. Freed. He was looking for Plumley initially, but Scabelli is blocked. And it'll stay here, but Robbie Walsh gets above the rim and says no. Kosano will come out of the game. Sean Thaxter returns. Anthony Reyes, number 21 to inbound. Josh Freed and Robbie Walsh getting after it a little bit. Referee steps in to have a quick conversation. And now over at the scorer's table, a quick change in one of the clocks, so it's 13.21 to play. 16 seconds, and Brennan got his hands in the passing lane again. Not a second came off the clock. That appears to be another error. Should have at least had one second come off the clock there. Now Reyes able to get it in. Through the lane, throwing it up wildly with Plumley. Here come the Garnet the other way. Robbie Walsh hurting a little bit on his way down the floor. Lieber can't hit, and it's out of bounds. Last touched by Haverford, but Robbie Walsh, I think, got popped in a not so comfortable spot, and I think he needs a little bit of a breather. Walsh definitely appears to be in some pain, so Henry Kosina will come back into the game. May just need a couple minutes to recover. And Yonda with a great cut. And a fine from Matt Brennan. Swarthmore retakes the lead here on senior day. 12.54 to play first half. Sherman. Plumley into the lane. Jumps and lucky to find Freed. Now a head fake. Plumley couldn't come up with it. Able to maintain possession, seven to shoot. A long three for Plumley. no good. That was ambitious at best. Now Brennan. Here's Sam Liebrich on the right wing. Great cut, Thaxter scores at the rim. Yonda with the find on the slip to the hole from Sean Thaxter. Walt Plumley, Yana got taken out by a screen, recovers. Reyes, guarded by Liebrich, backs it up with 11 to shoot. Comes off the freed screen, to the lane, he's blocked. Liebrich says no. Haverford will get it back underneath their own basket, six to shoot. Three point deficit, Josh Freed 
off the floor, as is Sam Liebrich. Stogden with the catch. This is Matt Sherman. Sherman with one to shoot, has to launch, bang! Long three is good for Matt Sherman. 12 apiece, 11.32 to play. Yonda off for Cosano. Cosano turns, has some space, might have been bumped, can't finish. Matt Sherman back the other way for Haverford. Long three for Plumlee, that one's good. Amazing what a couple steps in from NBA range can do for you. 15 to 12, Haverford leads. Cam Wiley, left wing for Cosano. Thought about the shot, wasn't given a ton of room. 11 to shoot, Sean Thaxter faces the basket. Head fake, turns, no good. One of the foul. Because it could have muscled up into him, I think, a little bit more. Plumley really wanted that one. Jeremy Evans. Now Plumley. Plumley with a quick trigger here. Seven to shoot. Shot will not count. And the foul will be called against Zach Yonda. Matt Sherman was all the way down the court thinking it was a moving screen. But it'll stay here. And Robbie Walsh will replace Sean Thaxter. And a timeout, 30 second timeout for Michael Mucci in his 21st season coaching the Fords. Situation for Swarthmore is very clear, win. And they lock up the number two seed in the Centennial Conference Tournament. On the other hand, with a loss, they open themselves up to dropping all the way to fourth. Haverford back onto the floor. It will be Anthony Reyes to inbound. Off a screen comes Sherman. Instead, they go to the baseline. Evans back up top for Sherman. It was a good look inside to the weak side block. Sam Stogden looks like he might have had a shot. Now a hand check will be called against Wiley. Wiley put that arm bar into him, which you can't do when the dribbler is faced up to you. Hand check is called. And that's the first on Wiley, the third against the home Garnet. Now Brennan and Leffler in the backcourt. They go pretty big here as Libra, Cosano, and Walsh are in the front court. Reyes gets it into Plumley. Plumley puts his head down and it goes the other way, an offensive foul. Plumley's not going to be happy, but that's the right call. Just put his head down. The shoulder into the defender who was standing right there and created space that way. It's going to be called every time. Still somewhat of a sleepy start here on a Saturday afternoon. 15 to 10, Haverford leads. Low scoring affair. Halfway through the first, Brennan, top of the key. It's good for three. We're tied again at 15 after the Brennan three. The answer will not come. Skibelli launched the three, and now here comes Brennan. Full head of steam. Pulls up and finds Leffler. Right back to Brennan. He'll try it again. A little short that time. Skibelli with a strong board.
Matt Sherman, really more of a facilitator so far here today. That time throws it away and a foul in the backcourt. Anthony Reyes ran right into Leffler and Leffler a good job of body control to make that contact apparent to the referee. Tied at 15. That's Reyes' second foul, the fourth on the Haverford Fords. Brennan directing traffic finds Leffler. Brennan off a screen for three. Two for three for Matt Brennan. Quick 6-0 run engineered by the point guard himself. Now here comes Haverford the other way. They look to answer. Stogden. Stevens couldn't get the pass off. He was looking for Shukla, and now here comes Leffler. Back for Thaxter. Walsh into the lane, through traffic. Can't get it to go. Tips it up and gets his own board. Taken out of his hands, though, and here comes Sherman on the run out. To the bucket, can't finish. Brennan got the hands in there defensively. Baseball pass from Liebrick. And Leffler again taken down, this time by Matt Sherman. Frustration foul, it appeared that time, from Sherman, the junior out of Narberth, Pennsylvania. And off will come Stogden and Sherman for Haverford. Just Sherman's first foul. Robbie Walsh comes off for the Garnet. 18-15, Swarthmore leads, 8-19 to play first half. Leffler having trouble, finds Liebrich. Comes baseline, but knocks it off his own knee and out of bounds. Back to Haverford it goes. Khalil Garns, when he's run the offense, that's been the most effective it's been. He has the basketball in his hands. Looks for Stevens. Back to Garns. Likes to go off ball. Now the three top of the key deadened against the back rim but comes off. Yonda. Slowed up well that time by Shukla. Goes behind his back. Shukla stays with him the whole way and a carry is called against Zach Yonda. It's great defense from the freshman guard Rohan Shukla. Haverford, five of 19 from the field, 26% here in the first half. Looking to get things going offensively. Garns into the lane, individual move, backs up, fires, scores. Khalil Garns. 18-17, neither team hit their stride yet. Sam Liebrich has it on the perimeter. Gets to the basket, shoulders contact and scores. Off the glass and good from Sam Liebrich. Liebrich has his first two off the bench today. Sean Thaxter gets in the passing lane, takes it away from Josh Freed who is flat footed. Now Leffler. No good off the glass. Cosano timed the jump well. Leffler, mid-range, a little short, and down with it is Shukla. Henry Stevens, off for Shukla. Spins, great look. Scabelli gets it taken off his hands, and here comes Yonda the other way after the pickup. Nothing comes cheap or easy near the basket. Libra guarded by Garns, Cosano. They're not giving him a lot of space. They've seen the scouting report. Liebrich off for Thaxter. Great head fake, another one, and this time he's fouled. He's looked at the officials twice before for a foul call on a head fake and then shot attempt. This the third time the charm. 
Foul is called and will go to the line for two. Thaxter is a 72% free throw shooter. Thaxter is good on the first. It's a four point cushion for Swarthmore. Into the game comes Cam Wiley. And the man leading all scorers this afternoon, Matt Brennan, he has eight. Brennan, three of four from the field, two of three from three. Thaxter hits the pair, and Swarthmore leads by five. And you've seen a lot of different rotations, a lot of different lineups for Swarthmore today compared to what you usually see. Part of that is senior day. Part of that, the emergence of Cam Wiley playing more minutes off the bench. And certainly a bit of a feeling out period as it's been a bit of a sluggish start for the Garnet. Plumley, no good from the top of the key. Yonda fights off his own teammate for that board. Now Wiley. 20 to shoot for Brennan, 5.25 in the first half. <laughs> 10 to shoot, Walsh catches it in the middle of the defense, spins, fires, and can't score, but it'll go to the line to shoot two. Robbie Walsh has improved his free throw shooting over the span of the year now up to 76% from the line. The lefty hits the first. Swarthmore three straight from the free throw line to build this lead. Second free throw good. Swarthmore leads by seven at home on Senior Day, the final Saturday of the regular season in the Centennial Conference. Now a bit of backcourt pressure here from Shane Leffler. Khalil Garns with the left-handed dribble across the timeline. Kyle Goldfarb off for Henry Stevens. Walt Plumley one dribble, launches and hits. Long two, good. Wiley elects to shoot, can't hit. Nice strong rebound from Walt Plumley. Now Garns, it'll be a blocking foul called against Cam Wiley, really sold it, seemed to have taken it in the center of the chest, but certainly was sliding on the way there. And I think may have taken him a bit on the side, which is the reason for the blocking foul. A good call from the referee. Goldfarb to inbound, 437 to play in a fresh shot clock. Plumley dribbles into a double team, lucky to get it out to Stevens. They'll reset. Five point lead for Swarthmore. A win clinches them the two seed. Goldfarb is good, just north of the foul line. Brennan off for Leffler. Inside they go to Thaxter. Defense doesn't collapse, so he takes two dribbles. Back for Liebrich. Now the double comes on Thaxter, 10 to shoot. Great baseline look, Walsh finishes. Under four to play first half. Wow, how about that? Kyle Goldfarb, how did he get that back up top? Gaines can score. Khalil Garns, the freshman out of Livingston, New Jersey, and now it'll stay here. Liebrick got a bit ahead of himself. Stevens got in there with the hands, but it'll stay with Swarthmore. Ten. 
Henry Cosano back into the game to replace Robbie Walsh. Trouble getting it in, they finally do. Great cut, and Cosano finishes. Great off-ball movement, really starting to neutralize this help defense from Haverford. The slip screens. The Fords just haven't been able to contain it to this point. And now just thrown away. Goldfarb. Not his best exhibition of dribbling. Back cut. Now hand it off. Leffler for Liebrich. 14 to shoot. Leffler gets it back. Inside they go. Thaxter has it. Goes to his right, puts it up, and scores off the glass. Sean Thaxter, a little bit of strength on the strong side block. Garnes gets through. Think he was hit? He was. You can count it. And one more coming. Thirty to twenty-five. Swarthmore leads. Khalil Garnes an opportunity to cut the deficit to just four for Haverford. Swarthmore improving the shooting percentage, forty point seven percent to this point. 11 for 27, they were hanging around that low 30s range for a majority of the first half. And Haverford up to 39% themselves. Good basketball game here this afternoon. Jim Lammers into the game for Swarthmore. Lammers launches the three, that's well short. Leffler very fortunate to be there, now Yonda top of the key. Walsh gets double teamed right upon the catch. Oh, they almost got there. Lammers is hit hard. He'll go to the line to shoot one more, or should shoot two, I should say. Couldn't finish on that drive, but man, they were about a half step of getting that steal and having an open run out. Walsh with a bit of a dust up there, or a drying of the lane. Lammers will shoot two. First is no good for Lammers. Second free throw won't go. Walsh with the rebound, puts it up. Oh, no good. So Walsh doing yeoman's work on the glass. Walsh more than halfway to a double-double here. Not even through the first half. Eight points, five boards. First free throw is good. Three for three from the line today for the 76% free throw shooter, Robbie Walsh. Second for the sophomore is good. Six point lead for Swarthmore. Under two minutes to play. Leffler guards Sherman. Khalil Garns, back to Sherman. Inside they go. Scabelli, double team comes on him. And who's gonna come up with it? Freed, Scabelli finishes. Garbage into gold for Haverford now. One scrum each way has led to an easy look for the offensive team. Yonda head faked twice. Lammers. 11 to shoot for Zach Yonda, now inside to Walsh. One dribble, lefty, can't get it to go, freed with the board. So an opportunity to cut it to one possession here for Haverford, as they've struggled most of the first half to get back into it. Plumley off for Garnes, through the lane, 
Floater won't go. Lammers with the board. He goes down. And Garnes gets it right back. Haverford, an opportunity to go two for one here. We'll see if they see it. Garnes, one of the three. Instead, Sherman. Three from Plumley is good. And now there's a 5% or a five second differential, I should say, between game and shot clock. And it's just a one point lead for Swarthmore. They're going to have to launch for the end of the first half. Cosano may have been well served to let that clock run down a little bit before throwing it in. You do have five seconds. And now a moving screen against Robbie Walsh, so it doesn't matter. A point of emphasis across college basketball this year, the moving screen. And this time the sophomore nabbed. Just Walsh's first foul, but he'll come out of the game replaced by Tom Wilmot. 11.2 seconds to play. Garns with the basketball, an opportunity to take the lead for Haverford. Into the lane he goes, double team comes, puts it up with the right hand, no good. Two to shoot, puts it up again, it's short. Brennan with the board and that's it. Neither team playing their best today, but they go to the half time and they go to the locker room, separated by just one point. Swarthmore shooting 38% from the field, 11 of 29. Haverford, 39%, 12 of 31. Swarthmore, two of eight from three. Haverford has four trays on 11 attempts. Swarthmore has gotten to the foul line 10 times and that's the difference in this game and then some. Eight for 10 from the line. Haverford only to the line three times, they've hit all three. 21 boards for the Garnet compared to 17 for the Fords, and seven offensive boards for Swarthmore in the first half. Leading scorer is Robbie Walsh. He's in double figures, along with Matt Brennan. Matt Brennan has eight, so he is the second leading scorer. Sean Thaxter, senior starter, has six. Zach Yonda, Sam Liebrich, Cam Wiley, and Henry Cosino all have two points. For Haverford, Khalil Garnes leads all scorers. He has 12 points. Walt Plumley has 10. Scabelli has four points. Sherman has three. And Goldfarb ends the first half with two, and those are your scores. And now you see at the half court stripe, the 1990-1991 Swarthmore Garnet basketball team. It was the alumni game today, before the game. And you hear the individuals being introduced now. Senior day and an opportunity to bring back some of the Garnet best. The 1990-1991 Swarthmore Garnet basketball team honored at halftime. Your score here after 20 minutes of basketball, Swarthmore 32, Haverford 31. We'll be back for the second half in just a few minutes and you are watching Swarthmore men's basketball on the Garnet Sports Network.
Welcome back to Tarble Pavilion on the campus of Swarthmore College. And this is coverage of Swarthmore men's basketball on the Garnet Sports Network. Bob Long here to bring you the second half, and it is 32-31. Swarthmore leads against the upstart Haverford Fords. It's been a down year all year for them. 4-20, 2-15 in the Centennial Conference. They try to play spoiler this afternoon and send Swarthmore cascading down the rankings and down the standings as we get ready for the Centennial Conference Tournament. Swarthmore will look to neutralize Khalil Garns, who's taken a third of the Ford's field goal attempts in the first half and leads all scorers with 12 points. Also, Walt Plumley off the bench had double figures as well with 10. We're underway here in the second half. Khalil Garns into the front court. Now off the screen comes Stevens. Scabelli thought about the three. Goldfarb, 11 to shoot for Goldfarb. Picked up his dribble and finds Garns. Garns launches from the baseline, it's good. Long two for Khalil Garns, he has 14. 5 of 11 from the field. Now Liebrich, inside they go to Walsh. He leads all Garnet scorers with 10. Down low to the senior, Thaxter. Off for Walsh. Yonda fakes the skip pass. Six to shoot for Sam Liebrich. Inside to Walsh and it's stolen. Goldfarb. Got his hands on it after it was poked away. Scabelli spins and traveled on his way to the bucket. It went down, but wave off the bucket. Swarthmore trails by one at home. Matt Brennan off for Yonda. Gets himself open, fires and is a bit short. And a foul is called. Will this go against Robbie Walsh? It appears that it will. Bit of a shove on the rebound. Second foul on Robbie Walsh. And the first on the Garnet here in the second half. Kyle Goldfarb off for Khalil Garns. Garns to the baseline, launches a tough one. Back iron no good, tipped up. Scabelli fires and scores. How about the work on the offensive glass? Joe Scabelli. And now Liebrich has a baseline lane. Up top for Yonda, bang. Yonda is good from three and we're tied at 35. Here is Kyle Goldfarb, comes baseline, fires, double clutches, couldn't hit though. Brennan, full head of steam, didn't have numbers, was poked away, but Liebrich has it. Nineteen to shoot for Sam Liebrich. Inside and Walsh couldn't get there, didn't have the position, a great job by Stogden to get the steal. Now Garden. Goldfarb. Stevens into the lane, floater, can't get it to go. Walsh may have altered that shot slightly. Inside Thaxter, before the defense is set up and he's fouled on his way to the bucket. Sam Stogden will be called with the grasp of the wrist. Swarthmore again leads. Thaxter, 72% from the foul line this season. Swarthmore goes a bit smaller here. Liebrich off for Shane Leffler. Second free throw will go. Thaxter gets the pair, and Swarthmore now leads by two. 
37-35, 17.06 to play, second half. Kyle Goldfarb. Now Matt Sherman off for Garns. Garns off a screen from the elbow, back iron no good. Now here comes Shane Leffler. Lane opened up for him, decided against it. Now the handoff. Leffler again spins and turns back up court. Now Walsh, no dribbles, just goes right up and scores. The right-handed floater over the left shoulder. Matt Sherman comes off the guard screen. Scabelli has been hunting his own shot today. 13 to shoot at Sherman. Bit of a push off, baseline can't hit. Thaxter out on the run out, one on two. Brennan goes to the hole, shoulders contact, and it'll stay here after the block from Kyle Goldfarb. Henry Cosano will come into the game to replace Robbie Walsh and Cam Wiley to replace Matt Brennan. Now Leffler to inbound from underneath the Garnet basket. Thaxter gets the basketball. Double team comes on him, picks up his dribble. And a foul is called before the travel. Swarthmore perhaps fortunate to be the recipient of that call. Second team foul. And the first on number 32, Joe Scabelli. Thaxter on the over the top lob pass. Wiley open for three. It's good. Nothing but net for the freshman Wiley. Just like that, a 7-0 run for Swarthmore, and they lead by seven. And a timeout is called on the floor by Kyle Goldfarb. And a full timeout here at Tarbell Pavilion. We'll take a break. 15.40 to play, second half. Final Saturday of the regular season in the Centennial Conference. And Swarthmore leads 42-35. A win gets them the two seed in the Centennial Conference. We're back at Tarbo Pavilion, 15.40 to play. Haverford with the basketball, trailing by seven. Kyle Goldfarb comes off the screen. And kicked off the foot from Garnes. Goldfarb gets it back and scores. Now Kosano's ahead of the defense. Wiley found him. Leffler. Now Liebrich off the screen, 20 to shoot. Kosano goes baseline, gets to the rim and scores. How about the freshman? And now an offensive foul is called. Kyle Goldfarb extended the elbow back into Shane Leffler, went down on the play. And back it goes to Swarthmore. First foul on Kyle Goldfarb. Wiley, the point guard. Good cut. Liebrich scores off the fine from Leffler. Haverford unable to contain the off-ball movement so far today. The slip screens have been the name of the game for Swarthmore. Getting it at will. 
Now Reyes offers Sherman. Anthony Reyes gets it back. Scabelli thought about the three. Goldfarb, Sherman with six to shoot. No good on the long three. Wiley, might have been hand checked on his way down the floor. Sets up the offense though. Reyes did his best to keep him in front. Cosano for Wiley. Wiley spins off for Thaxter. Cosano, top of the key, no good. Taken out of the hands originally, but now coming up with it is Sam Stogden. But he's got to be tougher on that rebound. Scabelli off for Reyes. 20 to shoot for Reyes. Scabelli picked up the dribble, looks for help. Matt Sherman to the baseline. Scabelli into the lane, jump stop, spins, and scores. 46-39, seven point lead for Swarthmore. Kim Wiley off for Leffler. Thaxter now looks for help, instead goes baseline himself. Good look for Leffler. Eight to shoot. Looking for help on the off ball movement. Wiley has it, three to shoot. He will launch. No good off the front rim. Scabelli with a strong board. Under 13 to play, second half. Swarthmore looking to lock up the second seed in the Centennial Conference. To the bucket and a foul on the way there. Leffler with the hand check against number 15, Kyle Goldfarb. Wholesale substitutions for Swarthmore. Almost an even game from the field. Swarthmore 16 field goals. Haverford also with 16. Swarthmore has four three-point attempts made, and Haverford with four as well. Only difference is that same difference from the first half. That's the free throws. Swarthmore 10 of 12 from the line, two of two this half, and Haverford three for three. Swarthmore owns a six rebound advantage, 27 boards to 21 for Haverford including eight on the offensive glass for the Garnet. Two ties and three lead changes this afternoon. Great job by Reyes to score. Went off the back of Wiley who was turned up floor. Reyes with his first two of the game. Cuts the deficit to five. Cosano again to the bucket, and again he scores. The freshman showing some moves off the dribble. Thought to be more of a three-point scoring option, and certainly he is, but showing some versatility on the offensive game. Now Sherman back to Scabelli. Scabelli has an open three. He's good. Four point lead for Swarthmore. Haverford trying to climb their way back in it. Brennan off the screen and a bit of a hold from behind. Matt Sherman is called. Second foul on Matt Sherman, the leading scorer of this Haverford team. Played limited minutes the last few games, was fighting an injury. Did not start today, but has played big minutes since then. He's played 14 minutes so far in this game. Only has three points. Brennan has it on the baseline after the inbound. Good cut from Yonda, and he scores off the glass. Swarthmore getting their way offensively, especially on out-of-bounds pieces. Running great sets, and the slip screen has gotten them to the bucket quite often this afternoon. 
Matt Sherman poked at by Matt Brennan and the reach in is called. Fifty to forty-four, eleven twenty-two to play, second half, and it'll be Anthony Reyes to inbound. Reyes off for Skibelli near the baseline. Khalil Garns, Plumley, back into the game. Reyes for three is no good. Leffler chases down the rebound. Yonda to the bucket, slips through and scores. Plumley set up, put his feet in concrete, giving Yonda enough time and with the body control to get around him and score. Now Reyes with the floater. He'll hit it. 52-46. Every time Swarthmore tries to pull away, Haverford answers. Cosino for three. That's short. And the rebound down to Plumley. Now this is Khalil Garns. Leading score at 14 points for Haverford. Josh Freed, who has not yet played in the second half, steps right up and knocks it down. Four point lead for Swarthmore. The Fords trying to spoil senior day here at Tarbo Pavilion and spoil expectations and dreams for a number two seed in the Centennial Conference Tournament. Brennan can't answer. Cosino can't on the tip either. And the foul is called. Will this go against Cosino? 50-50 ball. And it will indeed go against the freshman Cosino. Referees did not signal. They may have had different calls and had to get on the same page. Tom Wilmot's into the game. He'll replace Henry Cosano. And now a timeout is called, a 30-second timeout for head coach Landry Kozmowski in the Swarthmore Garden. Teams hanging around 43% shooting, each of them in this game. Haverford's knocked down five threes today, three for three from the free throw line, but have shot nine less than Swarthmore. That's been a big factor in this one. There's been balance in the Swarthmore scoring. Leading scorer is 12. Robbie Walsh has 12. And then Zach Yonda has nine. Sean Thaxter and Matt Brennan both have eight. Brennan put all eight in early and has been scoreless for a period of time. Cosano has six, Cam Wiley with five, Liebrich with four. Seven members of the Garnet on the board. Now Plumley into the lane with the jump stop, jumps to pass it, got it to Garns. Very fortunate to do so. It's 15 to shoot, Plumley into the lane, throws it up wildly, it won't go, but the foul will be called against the Garnet. And Walt Plumley has the opportunity to cut the deficit in half at the free throw line. Plumley gets that soft roll. The 71% free throw shooter splits the pair. It's 52-49. Liebrich had an open three. I don't think he thought he was going to be that open. Brennan with 12. Inside to Thaxter. Back for Leffler. The three is good for the senior. Leffler doubles the lead to six. Now inside they go Freed. Lucky to not travel. Now Plumley just loses the ball out of bounds. Wasn't touched. No argument from Plumley. Back it goes to Swarthmore. Eight 
8.56 to play, second half. Swarthmore trying to lock up the number two seed. It was a season that started as good as any in Swarthmore history. Leffler's good again. Nine point lead. Big moments here for the senior. He has six. And they've come in the last minute to give the Garnet a nine point lead. Full timeout, 8.33 to play. Swarthmore, six straight points from the senior Leffler. And they lead 58-49. We'll be back here from Tarbo Pavilion and you're watching Swarthmore, Swarthmore men's basketball on the Garnet Sports Network. We're back at Tarbell Pavilion. Nine point lead for Swarthmore over Haverford in the season finale here on the Garnet Sports Network. Bob Long bringing you the broadcast. We appreciate you having joined us all season long for Swarthmore Garnet men's basketball. Walt Plumley off for Garns. Khalil Garns off the screen. Hesitation dribble, back up top, Scabelli launches and hits. Joe Scabelli, a big three for Haverford. Cuts the deficit to six, and the mini run for Swarthmore ends. Back cut, Wilmot gets blocked, Josh Freed. Got the hands in there and said no. Garns backs it up. They trail by six, under eight minutes to play second half. Trying to be a thorn in the side of the Swarthmore Garnet. Brennan got his hands on it. Plumley stayed with it. Thought he traveled there. Scabelli gets it. Mid-range, it's good. Four-point lead for Swarthmore. Cut down from nine just a minute ago. And a moving screen, Tom Wilmots. Need to stay put until your player's through that screen. And Wilmots will come off the floor. Four guys come in for Swarthmore. Wiley, Cosino, Yonda, and Walsh. And Khalil Garns. Haverford, the architects of a quick 5-0 run, look to continue to cut into this deficit. And that time a moving screen against Reyes. So a moving screen each way. We've seen three on the afternoon as a whole. As we mentioned in the first half, a point of emphasis across college hoops this year and on down to high school and every other level. Making sure those moving screens are called because they've been neglected for years by referees. Yonda inside to Walsh. The leading scorer for the Garnet gets through the lane and is blocked again by Freed. Goes past the end line. Walsh did a nice job of shielding as that ball was bouncing. He knew it was going to bounce by the end line. Kind of like a soccer defender holding off an oncoming attacker. So it stays here with Swarthmore. Walsh on the lob. Couldn't get it there. Freed off for Garns. Garns to the bucket. Gets hit, counted, and one. He's got a shot to cut the deficit to just one. It's a 7-0 run for the forwards of Haverford College. Khalil Garns is good on the free throw. And just like that, we are how we ended the first half. Swarthmore leading by one. 26 points apiece here in the second half. 
Haverford looking to make their way all the way back. They need a stop here defensively. Brennan off the screen. They lay off him, so he shoots, and he drills it. The defense was confused. They both went to the roller, and they left a knockdown shooter in Matt Brennan. Four-point lead, now Garnes goes up top for Freed. This time Walsh gets a hand on it. Up the floor, Wiley, two on one, to the bucket himself, no. Yonda head fakes once, no good. Walsh with the tip. Robbie Walsh cleans up the mess. It's a six-point lead for Swarthmore. Now Khalil Garnes looks to answer. Off a screen, dives into the lane. Plumley off for Joe Scabelli, mid-range, no good this time, and a foul is called against Josh Freed. That's an easy call for the referee in plain sight. Just whacked Walsh over the head going for that rebound. And no matter how you slice it, whether it's Swarthmore up 12 or Swarthmore up one, the whole game has kind of shifted back to that six, seven point lead for Swarthmore. And that's where it stands right now with 5.36 to play, a timeout on the floor, 63-57. Swarthmore, five minutes and change away from earning the two seed in the Centennial Conference Tournament. We'll be back. Sixty-three fifty-seven, Swarthmore leads over Haverford. The lead was cut to just one for Swarthmore. And they've gone on a quick run to extend it to six. Joe Scabelli, 12 points here in the second half for Haverford, has really led the charge on the way back. Garnes has five points in the second half as well. Those two along with Plumley, but Plumley has been very quiet here in the second half. And now an offensive foul called against Matt Brennan. It's the eighth foul against the Swarthmore Garnet, but because it was on the offensive end, Haverford will not shoot the one and one, instead just the basketball. Josh Freed, top of the key. Hands off for Garnes. Wiley went behind the screen, Garnes couldn't get it off. Now takes a crazy shot, Cosino with the board. Not a good look for Khalil Garnes. Now Wiley goes behind the back, to the rim, puts it up, no good. Walsh, rebound, follow. Eight point lead for Swarthmore. Anthony Reyes, Reyes. What is he doing? That was a runner from the top of the key. 65-57. Haverford in no position to be giving away possessions like that. Reyes up the floor. Garns hammered and no, no bucket, but he'll shoot two at the line. Little bit of a better possession that time for Anthony Reyes, who on the previous possession decided a runner from the top of the key from the three-point line was the way to go. That time a much better decision found his teammate Garnes, but Garnes misses the front, and now the second free throw will come.
Garn's second free throw is good. He splits the pair. 65-58. Swarthmore, I don't think anyone, as Leffler goes to the bucket and scores with the left hand. Garns goes baseline, puts his head down. Now Plumley into the lane, he's picked. On the floor, Leffler and a jump ball. That should give it to Swarthmore, and indeed it will. I don't think anyone would confuse this with Swarthmore's best effort on the season, but in a game like this, senior day emotions high. Staying focused can be a challenge, and getting out of here with a win is all you can ask for. Right now they lead by nine, four minutes to play in the second half. Thaxter, he finds Leffler. Patient with the possession now, Swathmore. Good look for Thaxter, one dribble. And Thaxter lost it. Taken down in midcourt by Zach Yandes, number 21, Anthony Reyes. That's the ninth team foul, make it the 10th against the Garnet, the third against Yonda. And in the double bonus now is the Haverford College basketball team. Reyes to the line, shooting 80% on the year. First one is good. Reyes now has five points off the bench. End over end spin on the second, and it's good. Reyes has six. And the lead is seven for Swarthmore. Liebrich on the left wing. Thaxter doesn't want to put the ball on the ground. Now he does. Handoff for Liebrick. And a moving screen against Sean Thaxter. Doesn't like it. The fourth of that variety called this afternoon. And the third foul personally against Sean Thaxter. Yonda off the floor. Matt Brennan, the sophomore point guard into the game. Plumley for three, no good. And out of bounds last touched by Plumley itself. It bounced out without anybody touching it on the rebounding end. Three minutes, six seconds to play. And Swarthmore looks to get a timeout. Landry Kozmowski wants to set up this offensive possession. A two or a three here could really make the difference and get close to sealing the deal for Swarthmore at home on senior day. Three minutes exactly remaining, 67-60 Swarthmore. You're watching Swarthmore men's basketball on the Garnet Sports Network, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Tarble Pavilion. Three minutes exactly on the clock, 24 on the shot clock. Swarthmore leads by seven. And we'll see what the coaching staff has drawn up in that timeout. Swarthmore can really put it to Haverford here with a bucket or a three if it comes. Getting late early here in the second half.
It's Matt Brennan to start off. Baseline cut. Instead, they go over the top to Walsh, and he finishes. What a great look, and what a great play design. They ran Leffler to the baseline, left the weak side completely open, and over the top they went to Walsh. That's exactly what you want out of the timeout. A great draw up by Kozmolski. Now it's deflected initially by Walsh, and he's fouled. He tipped it off the backboard, caught it himself, and back the other way it comes. The seventh team foul against Haverford, and Walsh, nearly an 80% free throw shooter to the line. Games are won and lost at the front end. Two points here could go a long way for the Garnet. Missing the front end keeps Haverford right in the game. Walsh is good. A perfect five for five from the line today for Robbie Walsh. Make it six for six. Walsh is tied with Khalil Garns, and those two lead all scorers with 18 points apiece. Kosano into the or comes off the floor, I should say. Thaxter comes into the game. Two minutes, 29 seconds to play. Garns picked the ball up already. Goodness, two and a half minutes to go. Plumley for three. No good. Wasn't close. Walsh goes up high and has the board. Ninth rebound for Walsh, who has 20 and nine. One board away from a double double. Leffler through the lane, nearly was stripped. 15 to shoot. Now going down hard was Reyes. Are they gonna nab him for the foul or will it be Brennan? He was tugging away at the back and it looks like, at least by Reyes' reaction, that's what the call will be. Still a dis discussion on the floor. They're calling a double foul. Glorified slap on the wrist. So it appears they will not shoot the free throws. Put 12 seconds on the shot clock, two minutes and one second to play. That's Reyes' fourth foul. Great cut from Walsh, and he's hit on his way to the bucket. The screen and slip, and now a technical foul for Reyes, that's it. A technical foul is also a personal foul, that's Reyes' fifth, and he's done. So now, four free throws coming up. Seventy-one sixty. Two minutes to play. It'll be Zach Yonda to take the pair of free throws on the technical, and then Walsh will take two from the foul on the shot. No good from Yonda. One more coming. Yonda looking to get into the double figure category. With this free throw, he has nine. Second free throw is good. Yonda in double figures. And now Walsh will take two free throws. Reyes' day is done, 18 minutes played, six points, one rebound. He had an assist as well. 
Walsh is good, soft off the front rim, backboard and then cylinder. Seven for seven from the line. Make it eight of eight. He has 22 points to lead all scorers. Garns goes into a double team, cross court pass. To the rim, up and under, no good. Knocked out of bounds and it'll stay. Joe Scabelli with a good move, got to point blank range, just couldn't put it in. Now Garns launches the three, he's hit from Leffler. Not a good foul at all. Give him the backup three from the baseline if you want. Up 14, a minute 42 to go, no reason. Khalil Garns is good on the first free throw. Garns with 19 points. Second free throw, no good. One more coming. Third free throw was good, two out of three. Hit the first and last. Now Leffler turns with it. Haverford's gonna have to extend the pressure, go for a steal here. Thaxter to Leffler. Leffler gets into the lane, left-handed finish. <laughs> Whoo, senior, having a day. And Brandon Patton comes to the scorer's table as the three is missed from Skibelli. Walsh with the rebound, a minute six to play. Swarthmore leads by 14. And a timeout. They'll keep it going just to get the sub in. Haverford thinks they're coming back to the bench. They just substituted to get the, or they just took the time out, I should say, to get the substitutes in, and that's exactly what they're going to do. And now here come the seniors, Sean Thaxter. And Leffler will remain in the game for the time being. Thaxter with a nice hand for his contributions over the year here at Tarbo Pavilion. Christian Rhodes. Triple team comes on him. Kaufman now. Baseball pass to Leffler for three. No good. Patton gets the board. And he loses the ball. Rhodes wanted to go for the steal. Certainly did, but hammered Kyle Goldfarb on the way there. Both teams now in the double bonus. Two free throws coming up for Goldfarb. Haverford will drop to four and 21 on the year, two and 16 to complete their regular season in the Centennial Conference. Goldfarb no good on the first free throw. Second free throw in and out, rebound down to Skibelli, up and good. 76-64. Backcourt pressure on Leffler. Kaufman now. Rhodes looked like he was fouled. Nothing called. 26 seconds to play. Cross court pass to Patton. 10 seconds to shoot. Christian Rhodes spins. Nearly lost the ball. Gets it to Kaufman. Three is no good. And the rebound is down to Skibelli. 11 seconds to play. Goldfarb runs through the defender, and I believe very fortunate to earn that blocking foul against Leffler. Put his head down, drove into him, out of control. But the fourth foul against Shane Leffler. And now that foul appears to give an opportunity for one last opportunity to thank the seniors. Off comes Leffler, off comes Patton. The seniors here for Swarthmore College, the, winning, the winningest class 
in Swarthmore basketball history. And what an ovation. Free throw was good. And Cam Wiley's going to dribble it out. Swarthmore, what a year. What a season. 19 and 6, 13 and 5 in the Centennial Conference. And all alone at number two as they move to Lancaster, Pennsylvania now. Next stop, Centennial Conference Tournament. They will be the three seed, and they will either play Gettysburg or Dickinson in the first round matchup. Final stats from the game, 76-65. Swarthmore the winners by 11. They ended up shooting 27 of 60 from field goal. 7 of 19 from 3. They were 15 of 18 from the foul line. They out-rebounded Haverford by 14, 41 to 27. They had 14 offensive boards in the process. Haverford, 24 for 57 from the field. 6 of 18 from 3, 11 of 17 from the free throw line. Individually, Robbie Walsh led all scorers 22 points. He had 10 rebounds and a double-double. Yonda and Leffler both had 10 points. Brennan nicked both of them with 11. Sam Lieberk with four, Cam Wiley with five. Henry Cosino, three of nine from the field, did a great job driving the basketball. The freshman had six. And then Sean Thaxter, the senior, had eight for Haverford. Stevens did not score out of the starting lineup, neither did Stogden. Goldfarb had five, Garnes had 20. Scabelli with 18, Sherman with three. Reyes with six in an effort where he fouled out. Plumley with 11, and then Freed had two. Again, Swarthmore wins this one 76-65 and wraps up a 19-6 season, 13-5 in the Centennial Conference and are the two seed going into the Centennial Conference Tournament. A wonderful season. It started out as the best start in school history. This clearly one of the defining and best seasons in Swarthmore men's basketball history. A great job by head coach Landry Kozmalski and his assistants. And of course, congratulations again to the senior class to end on such a high note here at Tarbell Pavilion. Not done yet though, the work is not done into the Centennial Conference Tournament they go to play either Gettysburg or Dickinson. Last broadcast here for the regular season from Tarbell Pavilion. Bob Long saying so long. Thanks so much for listening all year long. Can't wait to see you next year. And this team's not done. Centennial Conference coming up for the Garnet.